Hi folks, welcome to my channel. My name's Joe. Uh, and uh, if you looked at the other video titles, you'll see this is a mishmash. Uh, things that I've worked on, things that I've tried to repair, um, usually succeeded. But today, I'm going to fix my Teramite, which is down again. Uh, I did four or five videos on trying to rebuild this machine, which is behind me somewhat. You can see parts of it down here, backhoe, the rest of it. So the problem today is yeah, right here missing a cylinder it's on the ground and I'll show you the, the issues with that in a minute but this is a 19 mid 70s mid 70s machine it's been through a lot um, I did some damage to it that's for sure I ran it out of oil so I had to rebuild the engine uh, a cheap and dirty rebuild um, wasn't bad. It was, runs fine. I, I, you don't run this thing at much more than an idle anyway. Uh, but it, uh, it's had several hoses redone. I did a series on uh, boring out some of the bushings and putting new pins in. Um, the transmission is always uh, screwing up. When you go across the H, it doesn't want to go across the H. However, Today's video is the cylinder. And it had two issues. Number one, it was leaking like a sieve out the front. And here is supposed to be one of the fittings right here. Um, it's actually part of the end piece. And I thought I had bent the elbow that came out because it had two elbows on it, two right angle fittings. So I was looking at the elbow because where this was sit in, sitting in, I think it was in upside down, but I think you don't have a choice. The, if you curl a bucket of rock or something too far, you can shear off this fitting. And I did that two or three times. Well, what's really interesting is the opposite side right here is a dent. And I haven't seen that before, mainly because I never pulled that, never pulled that cylinder all the way out. So I never really looked at it. But in fact, when I tried to take it apart, I couldn't get the piston out piston rod and it was hanging up right in that dent so between the issues with the packing with the way the top gland sealed and trying to get it apart and the fact that there's a dent in it and it's so thin that it's not worth trying to get that dent out. I mean, there are ways of doing it, but that's just not what I was gonna do. Uh, for less than 300 bucks, I bought a new cylinder. So this is going to be about what I'm doing to that cylinder to try to protect it a little more. So we're gonna go inside in a minute. As soon as I find a clean finger that I can shut the camera off with. Uh, that's the problem I'm working on old machines with hydraulic oil and grease all over them. So, yeah, that's where we are. Um, the one problem I'm going to have, thinking about it, these two, I'll call them bushings, these, the two shafts, the two holes for the pins on this old one are egg-shaped. And now I have to remember if in fact I bored 
oversized on the two pins in the machine. I may have more work cut out, work for me cut out than I wanted. But that's the way it is. So I'll wipe off this and just press this stop button. All right, we're back inside. And here is the cylinder that's going to replace the broken one. Now, I have a feeling this is probably a lot thicker than the one out there. And these bosses are probably pretty good, as well as the fittings, the red angle fittings. These, these are ORB or ORS or O-ring boss, O-ring seal, or SAE fittings. They have a little O-ring in them, you tighten down. The old cylinder had NPT threads. Uh, so I had to get some new fittings. So my thought was to protect these and to protect this case. So the first thing I did is figured out that a piece of 3-inch EMT, when it's cut, of course, it's slightly bigger when it's not cut, but if you are to put this in here, like that, and this, this is going to be really close. This is, it's, a, it's almost a perfect fit. So I'm going to use this as a clamping mechanism. This is not going to be what I use to give extra protection to the cylinder, although this certainly will help. Um, and it just dawned on me that I was thinking that the dent was on the same side as these, so I was going to protect everything at once with a piece I made up. But it turns out that the dent was on the bottom. Or the top, as the case may be. Um, and uh, well, let's start over. The, the smoke is coming out of the head, the two ears now. Um, because I thought, without looking, I should have looked again, that the dent was on the same side as these, which just didn't make sense, is that if I protected this whole piece, I wouldn't have any problems. So I was going to do this. Now, the problem with that is you can't get to the, the hoses. So I was going to make a piece here well probably at probably at the end and here and in the middle weld it to the EMT and then put a bolt through so that I could remove this and of course I'd have to cut out where the hoses come out because the hose comes this way out and this way so someplace in the middle I'd have to make a, a, a piece but, knowing what I know now, I may just protect the ends and just weld this piece on here and leave a whole bunch open just because I don't need all that. And I might make it a little shorter too. I've got a good inch plus in there. But now I have to reevaluate that. I guess I'm going to see which way this can go. If it can go with the fittings up, then the fittings will be protected. And in fact, the dent's on the bottom. But I thought the fittings were on the bottom because this guy, when the boom is all the way up, was not going to clear. So we'll get back to you in a little bit and see how much I'm going to modify my thoughts here. Uh, if the fittings can go upright, 
then really all I need to do is protect the bottom. All right, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll give you the results in a little bit. It'll be an instant for you. For me, it'll be a while. All right, so it's been a little bit since we went through this, and I've changed directions. Initially, my setup, this is a mock-up of the main boom on my backhoe. There's a pivot point, and this piece here is, is the back of the machine fully extended, and here it's fully retracted. And my thought, initially, because I'm pretty sure this came out this way, which has these fittings down towards the ground. So I built a frame to go around this like so. Built a frame like that. And I was going to put this bolted to the bottom of this to cover these. And then I said, well, maybe, because the cylinder that was in there was not the original, maybe they put the cylinder in upside down because they screwed up. And I think that's exactly what happened. So I said, well, let's see what happens if I turn this cylinder around and in its fully retracted position, This fitting will clear the main boom. This one will not. It's going to hit it by about a quarter of an inch. And you can see these are fairly tall. They're uh, O-ring seal fittings. ORS or ORB or SAE. And I think what the original cylinder was was cheaper. It just used NPT stuff. So what I'm going to do, I thought, is this is about a half inch shorter. This is strictly O-ring seal to NPT straight. This is a right angle to NPT swivel. And what I'm going to do, because I really think it'll fit then, is I am going to take this guy and put a plug in him flush and then I'm going to drill and tap an NPT quarter inch on the side now this is probably 3 8 but the hose I have is quarter inch so I'm probably gonna go straight with quarter inch so that I can just screw it right in and uh, that should give me the ability to turn this cylinder right side up. Now, the other extension, the full extension, would be like this. And in fact, I have the same problem hitting here. But again, if I put this on, it looks like I'll clear. So that's what I'm going to work on presently. And I, and I bought two of these. I bought two of these and I've already lost one just from coming downstairs to here. So I have to go find, and I only need one. The, this one will clear all the time. Well, maybe it won't. This one certainly will not. This one might. So we'll see. Um, but that saves me from having to put this on and since I've already made this and I've gotten a dent in here from before I may put that on in the middle anyway 
just to just to protect it and in fact I may cut another piece that's the full length just to add a little extra shield so that's where we are well this is how this grand experiment is going so far I actually took this steel plug because you can't really use cast iron you don't want to use cast iron this is this is steel this is steel and I had to turn the I had to turn the um, hmm, what would you call them the four pieces in here upside down so that I could feed in from this side because if I tried to feed from the other side there's no way I could do that and I ran this in as far as I could and it still wasn't enough to get me to basically bottom out in here. I had several threads st sticking up. So I then found one of my taps. One tap actually took out some stuff inside. And now I can run this down pretty much with the threads flush. Maybe even a little low, which would be good. So that's where I am right now. I'm going to take some Loctite. And some brake cleaner. I'm going to clean this really good, put some Loctite on it, crank it down and let it dry for a day. So that's part one. All right, so we're taking a bit of a risk. We're taking a bit of a risk here in that I'm going to be crushing that O-ring and hopefully not destroying it by putting it in here. You could always replace the O-ring, but I would prefer to not do that. And that's pretty had to go get my glasses. So that's pretty bottomed out. And currently, heh, I don't remember which side they come up on. I will be right back. I have to see which side the cable the hoses are going to come up on. Okay, so if I'm trying to put this in, the machine is back here. This goes out to the pivot on the boom. And it's face up as I want. The hoses are coming in on the passenger side, I guess. So I want I want to put my my threaded fitting on this face. So now I'll set this up. I don't know how much of that I'm going to show you. And I will center that, drill it, uh, check the depth. Tap it. Well, I won't tap it yet. Uh, drill it, then have to take this and flip it up and drill it. Uh, out from the bottom. Now because this is at an angle, well, it's kind of a good thing. Oh, and I'll have plenty of room to turn that fitting. I forgot there was a, a boss here. It almost would be better if I could drill into here, but I don't, I don't think that's, that's a wise wise thing to do. I'm just looking at the thicknesses here of what I can what I can get away with. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to dr drill here. And the reason for that is this is thicker than this so no matter what I get in I'll get a couple extra threads. Alright we'll try that. All right, so drilling 
on this centerpiece has one plus and one minus. It makes it a lot easier to chuck if I use the flats in the vise. Because if I had the flats here and here, I'd have two V's this way, and I'd have to see if I got a couple of V blocks that are 45s to hold it in place and juggle all that. The problem now is that this is not flat, so it's really hard to get a drill started in it. So what I'm going to do is take down a little of this with a mill so that I can get a center drill in there. Oh, sorry about that guys. So I had marked the center of this ridge and it looks like I'm a hair high so maybe I'll straighten that out. And there we go. Now with the center drills that I have, I really didn't I probably didn't need to do that, but it didn't hurt. So now I'm going to change over to a center drill. Huh. Okay, let's run this past it. Well, I have three different size shanks here <clears throat> on my drill, and I don't know. Oh, okay, so one of them does fit. Oh, that's not... That's a... That's an end mill. Well, I have two different sizes, and that one's too loose, and this one's too big. So we take out the collet. Go to our trusty collet store. Don't that beat all? Going to have to use one of my Chinese collets, which go in tight. I'm not thrilled with them, but they do the job. The uh, probably should take them and tap them so that they're a little looser because you actually have to use a pair of pliers on them to get them to not turn on you. Ooh, maybe that one. I've used it enough. No, nope, see it's I can cheat, I guess, I think. Nope. It's going to turn no matter what. So, got to get a pair of pliers. So this is not how it's supposed to be done. This is how I'm doing it. The guys in the machine shops will be laughing at me. but gets the job done for me. So, and what I'm doing now is I'm just tightening the nut up on the top 
the, to draw the use this draw bar to draw in the collet uh, to that point. Now I can center that again. Both ways, I run it past. I can see that I am, I have to come out a little to there. And I have to, this was seven eighths. So what I did is I, took eighths. I want to take sixteenths and put a sixteenth on each end and I need to be at the halfway mark. And that is really close. Close enough for government work as they say. <coughs> Now I have a decision to make. Do I leave it in this setup or do I move to the drill press? I have a center. I can keep it level. Uh, if I were to move, if I were to stay here, I'd have to find more collets and all that nonsense. I think I'm going to move now to the drill press and just look up what I need for 3 8 NPT and start drilling. One of my many faults as a do-it-yourselfer is that I do not clean my equipment nearly as well as I should or ever. I just spent a half an hour over here cleaning and if you look at the other lathe there's a pile of crap around it the cutoff saw has a bunch of stuff around it I didn't clean this off even though I just finished using it and said I should clean it what I did do is clean the floor and clean this because this guy is going to have to do the drilling now this is supposedly the 37 60 fourths that I have to drill so I am going to start small going to drill probably to right about there which is at two and a half inches on my on my scale Probably should have tightened the chuck up first. Uh, I'm gonna go check and see where that is again. Yeah, two and a half will do it.
I might take my time getting up there. I don't want to lose that center. Well, I'm going to stop here. You know the drill. It's rinse and repeat. Okay, that's the end of the drilling. Probably, I guess I should have taken the time to leave it on the bridge port or at least clamp down the vise because it walked and I've now lost centering. It's a little closer to the bottom that I want. It's a little closer to this edge that I want. And it's supposed to be 37 64 so I've got a 36 64 so We're going to see how this taps. So that's the next project. So maybe I'll take you over there and show you the problems that this is going to create. Back on the drill press. Well, I clamped the vise down. And I knew I was going to have trouble starting because of these ridges. So I needed some way to keep my tap square and be able to turn it and put the proper pressure down. So tap fits a 5 8 12 point to a quarter inch adapter to the quarter inch hex impact adapter and uh, seems to be going okay certainly is tight, which is a good thing, I guess. So, we'll keep working our way down. Now I have, whoops, and now something just moved. Although I'm probably far enough in that it doesn't matter. I may put another. One, two, well I've got six threads in there, which is a good start, which I think I'm going to be enough to go over to the regular vise and finish tapping that and it's quite possible that this tap has bottomed out so I have more taps but I'm not so sure that's going to be enough Boy, it's a good thing I bought two of these. So the problem is, is on the side. Well, on the top, there's only one, two, three, four threads on this edge before the fitting starts interfering here with the flow. And on the sides, it's even worse. It's two threads. So the question becomes, maybe what I do is I tap it further down with a different tap, run the hose in, and then re-drill through the hose, which is probably the most smartest thing to do at this point. All right, that's where we are. You know, prototyping is always fun. Oh, okay, so we're going to bring you up to speed. So, because this is a blind hole going 
this way, I had to use a series of taps, almost like a bottom tap, only you can't call it a bottom tap for NPT. But in order to get the threads far enough in there, I had to play some games, get the tap in as far as I could, and then take a die to these threads and cut these back as far as I could because it was still pretty tight. Just to make sure I had a good seal, I've got some Teflon, no, some Loctite thread sealant with Teflon. And uh, that's what the Loctite book calls for with their little chart. And I have a little tube and a big white tube. And then that's also some thread sealant. But it doesn't say with Loctite on it. It's probably too old. <laughs> Most of these are pretty old. They're probably all expired. God knows if they even work. So... Um, so I threaded that in as far as I could, and you can just see that little white stripe there is the beginning of the threads for the fitting that I screwed in. So there's just a little bit of interference. Um, not enough for me to drill it out. I'm going to leave it. Um, if it... If it causes some problems, such as cavitation or something, then maybe I'll do something with it. But right now, it's going on the cylinder. So, we'll try that. I'll set you up. Well, um, I'm, I, I misspoke. I'm actually going to cut this square off, grind off this end so that I have a little more depth because I don't need that anymore that it's not going anywhere right now not with everything threaded together and I was going to show you this is a rigid pipe die comes in a whole set which I'll show you in a minute but what's really neat about it is normally these four dies one two three Four are set up so that you feed the pipe from this side it gives it some centering and you can turn it and thread it however if you take this plate off you can change the dies you can flip two number two and number four you flip them and then numbers one and three you swap them and flip them and the dies are actually labeled along with the um, holder the die holder so that when you flip it three becomes one and one becomes three two stays two and four stays four so you can run these either way and I turned them around backwards because I need I couldn't feed this through the center of this so I had to feed it in this way so that's a kind of neat thing and um, rigid all right uh, what's it all right R-I-D-G-I-D, -I -D. and I hit, there's a whole set of them, as you can see. They go on here, like this. One, one handed is a little harder than two hands. And I have two handles, which is interesting. I don't know how I ended up with two handles and one set. But I did, and they go like that. Well, it doesn't like to go like that, so I have to turn that around, and this becomes my set, just like that, which is really useful. I just hang that up on my pegboard, and it's done. So that's that. And this, I'm just going to take my little four inch with a cutoff wheel and, and slice that off. So, all right, then we'll put it onto the cylinder. All right, the big moment. I haven't tightened it up all the way. Let's see if it's actually going where I thought. And 
whether or not I have to make another one. So. Uh, let's see. Hopefully this tightens up quick because this doesn't seem like... Oh, I guess it is going to tighten up quick. There we are. Now... Let's just see what I gained. On this end is two inches. On this end is... It's actually two and an eighth. And on this end, it is an inch and nine sixteenths, which should be just enough. And if it isn't, I can bevel this backside because that's where it's going to hit first. So I should be all set. All right, I think we're going to. It's been long enough that I don't remember how I left the backhoe. I think we're ready to put it back in. Well, I'm trying to get you close enough to the action. It would have been nice if I had kept track of which pins go where. Um, I believe this is the pin for here. And it should go in this way. So we're going to put this in easy first. Feels like I should have had some washers on that. Oh. <laughs> oh, I forgot. The uh, grease zerks are too long. I have to grind them off. All right. I'm going to shut you off while I do that. So, what I did, uh, because the machine's too noisy, I didn't record it. Um, this, this pin was easy to put in, and I put the cotter split pin on the other side. Then I hooked up the hydraulics so that I could get the cylinder to come out. I'll have to check for leaks later. I have to see if I got enough off of this Zerk fitting, which I probably want to turn around. Yep, I want to turn it around. So, I'll just take it down like this, and, huh. I wanted to make sure I had spacers for this in here and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to screw something up because if I had line board these it would be out of whack but it looks good so now I've got to clean the pin and spacers so the spacers aren't much more than just big washers, which is fine. And they're nice and greasy, but they have dirt in them because they fell out. Well, I have to clean them, I guess. I really don't want to grind dirt into them.
Well, okay, so it must have been centered. Ah, oh, but this, this tube is wider. This tube is wider than the other tube, the tube that came off. Oh, too far out. Too far out. Okay, I guess I'll have to fire up the machine. Suck it in just a hair. One of these days I'll take care of that surging or galloping, but not today. Close enough to drive the pin in. I was told you never reuse split pins. So, I'm going to reuse this one. Well, I was able to get rid of two washers, uh, spacers. I'm going to move you back and give it a shot. Now, I still think I'm going to put a piece under here, but now because these are protected, I'm going to redo what I had and make it pretty much full length and just a half. I don't need it on the top. Well, it wouldn't hurt to put it on the top, I guess. Uh, and we'll go from there. All right, let's back you up a little. Well, I guess my calculations were off. That uh, broke the piece I was I spent so much time making. That really bites. I really hate having them underneath. But I don't think there's any way short of burning a hole through this channel where the fitting goes that it's going to work. And boy, I could do that, but Jesus. So yet another fail. <laughs> uh, I was noticing those are three eighths hoses. I had switched over almost everything to quarter inch hoses. But those two are three eighths. The outriggers are three eighths. The two cylinders out here are quarter. All right. Oh, that hurt. Oh, I got a piece of steel. Uh, got rid of that steel. All right, we'll try again. Well, right back to where I was with the old cylinder. The fittings are on the bottom. I have no protection. I'm done with this project for now. I really do want to turn that cylinder around, but not, not this year. So now let's see if I even have any hydraulic fluid left to to test this thing. <laughs> All 
All right, we're back functional. I got a, I got some work I've got to do on with the with it. So I think we're going to call it quits here. I can't turn the cylinder around because when I go all the way up, the top fitting hits. It would have been nice if the fittings were on the side, but that's not going to happen. I'd have to re-weld the bottom pivot point 90 degrees out. So I guess I'll end up putting the original shield that I had made on. All is not lost. I have to cut out for the hoses. It looks awkward as hell, but it will protect everything. So that's it. Um, a lot of work for nothing right now, but uh, I destroyed the fitting because I didn't measure close enough. My fault. And I did make the bottom piece. I only have a little bit left to go, so it, all is not lost. The, the, the cover that I made for the bottom is going to be my savior, I guess, but not today. So thanks for watching. Huh. This ought to be a little disjointed since it's been over a few weeks. Uh, like, dislike, share, comment, subscribe, whatever. <laughs> and uh, I think shortly after this, well before or after this, so if it's before this, you'll have seen my video on uh, underground cable location. And if it's after this, Stay tuned. And uh, ultimately, I'll get back to my light tower trailer. Uh, that's taking in yet another detour. So uh, have a good day.